and welcome to MCFC 9320 Pubcast Midweek Special. Hello, Stan. Hello, Anne Marie. How the devil are you? Good evening, Andy. All good. Before, before we go on, please don't set the Mickey out of my nose. It's still sunburnt. I've been called Fergie and everything, tag it the lot over the past uh, couple of days. So please refrain from calling me Rudolph. That's another one. So anyway, not laugh. we was just chatting off air, weren't we? And it's like Stan said it, you know, not really much has happened in, in the land of city this, this week, has it, Stan? Yeah, quiet. So I like quiet. Them this time of year, nice and quiet. And yeah, we just the other days. We only had a trip over to the Bernabeu, didn't we, to get an absolutely... Mm, listen, I consider it a masterclass of a result compared to our little... where we come, come, it came short a little bit last season. I have to say, though, Kyle Walker, mate. Wow, wow, wow. Mm. He, he absolutely had. I don't want to tempt fate. He had Vinicius Jr. in his back pocket, didn't he? He did. Apart from the goal, yeah. Well, to to be fair, Vinicius had to move inside, didn't he, to get the goal? It was like, Kyle, you're doing too well. <laughs> he's he's going to start moving. You're giving him enough. Give him a little bow now and again, because uh, sorry, he you can't say that. It's not even nine o'clock. Oh, it'll be it'll it'll go out on air after nine o'clock. So you can say, give him a bow and go on. Yeah. Well, yeah, he was. He was outstanding. But Anne Marie, you say, Kyle. Kyle, what do you point the finger at Kyle, or do you just think, hang on, why was why was Diaz in particular turning his back? Well, I think you can point the finger at any one of them in the, you know, be it midfield, be it defense, when it came to that goal, because he was running at us and no everyone just kept backing off. Nobody put a tackle in. You take the tackle, you, you put the tackle in, you take one for the team. <laughs> so, it sounds so wrong now. I don't yeah, know what you and Stan I don't know what you and Stan have been up to, but I'll tell you what, I, I've been asleep. I don't, have, have I missed something? Yeah, but you do, you put the tackle in, don't you? <laughs> yeah. you, you, you take one for the team. Yeah, you're, you're absolutely right. My 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 mind wanders sometimes. Yeah, one track. Yeah. You are absolutely I have to say though. I thought Bernardo Silva had a terrible match, if not the worst game I've seen him play for City. However, I'm not going to have a go at him because and there's no other player I would want on the right for the return fixture on Wednesday. No, I would agree with you. Uh, as always, as always. But I wish you'd put a cross in now and again. Yeah, but you, listen, you, we know that's not Bernardo's game, don't we? He's all about ball retention, Bernardo. And I've, I've seen a few and it, all over t Twitter, because Twitter's always the Bible and it's always honest and stuff like that, says no one ever. I've seen people having a go at, at Jack for the same, but I thought Jack had a really good, mature performance stand where ball retention, there was a time he was getting smashed left, right and centre. And let's not forget... Madrid could have, could have and should have been down to nine men in the first half alone. Yeah, yeah, there's, there's no doubt about that. They got they got away with it, um, but that's Real at Real. You know, you look over the years, there's always something. But the thing with this right wing spot is, if there's ever a problem, it's that right wing. You know, Silva can't quite do it there. Mares can't quite quite. Can't quite do it there. Is it not the fact that what we're looking for in a player in that position is not what Pep wants of that player? We we like as British fans, we like to see somebody getting the ball, taking on the defender, getting down at the byline, and winging one across. And it's we don't do it. Everyone's going to flop, but we just don't do it. the team. Do not do it. But we say, we say we've seen that stand, and we, we've said it a few times where our game over the past two three seasons has changed because everybody okay. parks the everybody parks the bus now, so it's okay. pointless having your your Raheem Sterling's, your your Leroy Sané's because they don't 
it's pointless bombing down the down the wings if they can't get past that. You know, uh, a big fifty three bus. See, there's yeah. one fifty three bus. Oh, you can't. There's no room for them to make that those runs and get in the back. The back that, exactly. that little gap at the back's not there anymore. And um, it, it was on there like that Camavinga, Camel Finger. I didn't see him bombing on up on the left. He was stuck. He was sat there at the back, and he was frightened to death. And the one time he did do it, he gave the ball away, and we scored. Right. Let's get to that, Anne Marie. Let's get to that. I'm sick of hearing right. The ball was out of play. For, for me, in my eyes, A, it was totally inconclusive. If it's inconclusive, you always give the benefit of the doubt. However, I don't know. I don't know. I don't even think I posted it. If, if the if, and a big if, the ball did go out of play, the ball actually went to Real Madrid players then who carried on. Cam, camel finger, whatever he's called. Mm -hmm. It actually come to him. He lost the ball. So our second phase then is where we scored. Now, there's ample opportunity for that ball to be pulled back saying the ball was out. Mm -hmm. So for me, it's a, it's a nonsense. But what a great what a great goal by, by KDB. And there was a lot of motion in there, wasn't it? Because of what had gone on with Courtois and, uh, and De Bruyne as yeah. X. You could just see it. It's almost like it, the emotion in his face. But full... On a side note with, with De Bruyne, he was actually asked, when all this was going on, he was actually asked, I've, I've seen an interview of it, where the national manager said, do you want Courtois dropping, you know, for what he'd done? And KDB says, no, because that won't benefit the team. And what I think that just marks man, because I'd be saying, yeah, and I also want to knock him up and down, up and down Belgium as well. Yeah. It's a very flat country, that Ander. <laughs> Not as flat as yours. Where's your anyway? Where's your cell tonight? You out? You out on bail? Yeah, they let me out. Lord is not on, so they've let me out. They said you can behave yourself. <laughs> that doesn't say a lot, Amory. That does it? No, it doesn't. <laughs> well, I can't. Can I? Manage through was out last week, so I can't. I can't get in. Stop. But you know, you know what I mean by me by the point of that. What with KDB, he could have quite easily have said. Yeah, I can't play. You know, like some players, I'm not playing. You no, know, almost like a child. Like, oh, I'm not. Yeah. If he's in the team, I'm not in the team. But the mat the maturity. And I was watching on a, again on a side note. I was watching something on a, a video of KDB his first match for us away to Palace, uh, and how much is <laughs> a how much he's developed as a player as well. But b bloody hell, we've aged him. Yeah. Yeah. Would you, would you, 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 you'd age if you had to go to work every day and make that ball of wing the tickets, striving for perfection. I do that when I look at the mirror. He's got to wind up, he's, he's got to grind them down, hasn't he? He has yeah. to. Yeah. I, 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 I mean, what we see on the pitch is bad enough. I mean, it must be a nightmare, Jordan saying it. You're only 41 degrees, I want you 45 degrees. Drill the ball back into it. Right, I'll tell, you, I'll tell you what we're going to do. I'll tell you what we're going to do here. And it's something we don't normally do. I'm going to go through. And I'll... I'll, I'll get, I'm going to, we'll go, go through player ratings. I'll give my... What I think. And tell me if, if I'm far off. Edison, I'm going to give a nine for them two brilliant, brilliant saves. What, what he did. Because... There was at there was at the time it, it was being a little bit criticised for Vinicius Junior's goal, but I I don't think he had I don't think he had you know he was unsighted by Diaz turning his back. You sure it wasn't yeah. Walker? No, it was Diaz. Did you would you go with a nine? Do you follow John Addison, the goalkeeping analytic fellow on Twitter? Oh, I thought he, you meant following people. I thought that's why you're in Nick, mate. No. Restraining order. No, he's um, John Addison does some really, really good stuff on the goalkeeper. And he Not was saying that, that they, they rated his chance of stopping that at 29%. It was, he could have got it, but it was hit so, I was hard, so late. It was the speed as well, the speed yeah. of the shot as well. Yeah, it was so hard, so accurate. You might have got it if you'd have just moved your feet a bit, but in the grand scheme of things, you're going to have to give it, you, you've got to give it Vinicius because. It was a cracker. It was an absolute page. 
yeah. My next one, I'm would would you go with it a nine? For Edison. Yeah. yeah. Oh, I don't. Yeah, yeah. Fair enough for Edison. Yeah, yeah. I'm gonna go with Walker. A solid ten, guys. I tell you what. What is it? Thirty odd to go against, in my opinion, the fastest wide player in the world. And not only that, do bloody well because I don't know if you've seen the cl in the clips of a uh, after the match. I think. Walker was talking to John Stones and Vinicius was talking to Edison and you could see Vinicius having it like that. Mm. And it turned round for, for Walker to come over. Walker come over, he more or less double high five him and, and give give him a hug. And, and we're just going to welcome Martin. Hello, Martin. Hello. Uh, not a damn purpose. Sorry. <laughs> right, right. We, Evening. We, Right, like, listen, listen, Would you? We, we're doing something we don't we don't normally do. We, we cause I'm still a bit the, the entertaining, <laughs> talking sense. We can't, we, can't <laughs> Martin, we can't know Martin's joined us. So yeah, <laughs> but I'm, we don't normally do because it's a midweek show and stuff like that. You know, we go we're doing player ratings because I I we just talked about Edison. I'm giving Edison a nine because. On reflection, he had no. I don't think he had a chance with Vinicius's shot. And also, I just think the two two saves he made. He's been criticised for not shot stopping, hasn't he? But I just thought over the past few weeks, he's really got his shot stopping in, in gear. I thought he was exceptional. Mm. And anyone who has a go at Edison now, it, it, it's for me. It's just an agenda. It's got to be an agenda. Because if you got it, it, even the past few weeks, he's been amazing. But it, it th that goal could you, sometimes you got to give you got to give the opposition the credit. It was one hell of a strike. How's this, Martin? How's this for you? I've heard he had a twenty nine percent chance of saving that. Oh, well, that's higher than what I thought it'd be, actually. That's come from uh, an, an unnamed source. Did it come from BN Sports? No, I just... No, no. Are you, are you Have I missed a joke? Are, are, no. Are you missing our analytics <laughs> and our statistics? We go into great detail on this show, you know. I, I don't look at statistics a lot anymore. So, so anyway, let's fast forward, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> We just fast forwarded to Walker. I'm, I, I was saying, and uh, Stan and Anne Marie have, have not got to the point yet. Walker, I'm giving a ten out of ten because I just thought he was Ooh. exceptional. He has been given, he's been getting pelters like from from me, not pelters from me in particular, but me saying he doesn't deserve to be in the team at the minute for this reason, that reason, because mainly the way we've settled with the inverted fullback, if you like, it doesn't suit that. However, as an out and out fullback, I think he had a worldie against the quickest player on the planet. Um, do you know what I love about it? He stopped. Do you know what he started doing? When he's been playing recently, I don't know what it is, he's realised that his main job's defended. Don't you put that down to Pep, though? Because before we start... Yeah. I'm, I'm, uh, uh, yeah. I'm, let Amory go with this one, right? I think the biggest problem on Maria with Walker is when Pep started tinkering the in inverted fullbacks, didn't we? Where it, Pep sort of like had a plan. Oh, I can see Stan warming up there with what I'm about to say. So, Walker, for me, Walker was playing fine as a, an out and out fullback, which he is. You know, I don't think anybody will deny he's a, a top, top fullback. Soon as soon as he start, Pep started tinkering about for for good reasons as well, which works for us. Walker had been left a little bit perplexed, maybe about being left out of the team, and he and he can't fit in, especially with Pep coming out and saying, you know, Kyle can't do that job. But as an out and out fullback, I just thought it was incredible against again against the 
for me, the quickest player on the planet, apart from me. No, and I would <coughs> say it. You agree with me? It's no, not I'm not. I'm not going to say that I agree with you because I think there's a drink. there's lots of reasons why Walker hasn't been a regular in the starting lineup, and that's down to his behaviour off the pitch, which I don't mm. think has gone down well with Pep his, or the club. His pants, his pants went down well. I saw yeah. it, but. You know, and and yeah, he was called out for you know basically being a bit thick, not intelligent enough to play the inverted mid, you know, midfielder. And while I agree, there's not many that are faster than him. He did when he was going forward, he quite often got caught out, and that's one of the other reasons why I think he's not been a regular lately. Um, he did a great job. On Tuesday night, he really did. I wouldn't go as far as a 10 because I don't think any of them particularly deserved a 10 on Tuesday. I think the heat got to all of them. Um so I don't I don't necessarily think any of them deserved a 10. I'd definitely go with a nine for him. Okay. Stan. Yeah, it comes back to what we've been saying for quite a while. I mean, I spoke to you before the game, Andy, didn't we? And we said that we thought Walker would play for the uh, for the reasons that Vinicius was so quick. It would have been better playing him there than another um, one of the three at the back. And it, it, it made sense. Uh, you know, I don't think he, uh, he gave it the right amount. Well, he did give it the right amount, I thought. He didn't go mad and start thinking, right, well, I'll put somebody else in there that can do the job. I thought he did a really good job, Walker. I did. Um, I'd give him eight. Not because I think that's a low number. I think eight out of ten is a good number. Um, but there was a couple of little bits, you know. But he, he, he did the job. And he did it well. And no complaints here. Martin. No, I actually, I think eight out of ten is a fair, fair score. So uh, awesome. I, I went overboard then, did we miss them? Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, uh, 10 out of 10's an out score. Uh, I very rarely give anyone 10 out of 10. Because yeah. I always think there's room for improvement. But that's my philosophy in life anyway. Uh, but, to, I mean, to me, to keep probably their most dangerous player to a minimum, because yeah. I, I don't think Vinny was that great. thought Walker did a very good job. thought Walker... But it's because he didn't do this bombing forward that he likes to do. But, you know, like I said, he, he's been a silly boy. And Marie Spahn, he's been a silly boy this season. And Pep called him out. And he's done well to come back in. And, and the thing is, we needed him. We needed him. So we'll see. We'll see what he does. Uh, second leg. But, no, 8 out of 10 for me. Right. I'm going to go on to Kanji. I thought Kanji was also equally brilliant. I'm not going to say he was 10 out of 10, because there's always room for improvement, Anne-Marie. But I just thought, <laughs> I thought Kanji up against Rodrigo, who, who let's not you know, let's not forget who, who did us massively. I thought Kanji was phenomenal on that left. And I'm going to give Kanji an 8.5, because I just think... To keep, to keep. Oh, I can see Stan agree with me. No, no, no. I'm just going. Let's have a think. Oh, but you're, yeah. I, I think I that's just, in the right range because we've got Diaz to go yet, haven't we? So I might oh. surprise you with Diaz, but we've not got that yet, Stan. <laughs> I just, yeah, I just think that Akanja had and then played incredibly well, and I should say yet again, yet again. It's almost he, he plays better. Left back than he does right back. Yeah, but we know somebody else who started out like that. Just say what you just say what's in your Cancello. mind. Cancelo. Cancelo was you know, is a better left back than right back. Uh but with regards to a kanji, I'd give him an eight. I thought he had a great game. Um and didn't really put a foot wrong. He didn't. Go on, Stan. 
No, I, I think you, you're both there. It's eight, 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 eight and a half. Either one will do. Um, eight point two five here in the middle. No, well, no. The thing is, what you, what I like is you don't want a defender to be noticed because they quietly get on with the job, and he did. You know, he didn't he didn't make ricks where you thought, how's he going to get out of that? He just he just played it solid. He gave very very little away, or he gave practically nothing. For Rodrigo to work on because we saw Rodrigo last year. He, if if there's half a chance, he'll dig you out. And I thought, you know, that first half especially, the all that the second half, the beginning of the second half, you know, that was what that was our wobble bit. But you can't go to Real Madrid and expect to dominate for ninety minutes. Absolutely, spot on. Spot on. Even even yeah. even though even though I knew Martin was going to say that. Because we spoke about that, is it last night, pal? Where these people who expect, because because we're in Manchester City now, right? We mm. we we always have, you know, nine ninety nine percent of the time we have high percentage of football, no matter where we go. In the Premier League, the FA Cup, the League Cup, we're at Real Madrid. You're absolutely right, Stan. We're at Real Madrid. Sets is what I call them. Do you say do you say felt tip then? Yeah, I, I just I don't get these fans. That team, you know, oh. last night, go on, sorry, Martin. I was just going to say that team we played last night. I wouldn't say they were a bit better than anything that you play in the Premier League. I would say they were about fifteen continents better than anything that you played. They were miles ahead tactically. Um, you know. Playing football correctly in the right manner. Hang on, whoa, whoa, whoa! How can they play football in the whoa. right manner? Whoa! When they, should have, been, that, when they, no, when they should have been down to nine men in the first half. It's Europe. It's what they do. What the point I'm trying to make is, if you'd have watched that AC game in Inter last night, I reckon more British people would have liked that because it was proper crash bang wallet. Not, 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 not as technically, not technically. What we saw on Tuesday night was it? I totally agree there, mate. Correct. Yeah, you know the defenses weren't really on top. You, you thought you looked at some of them defenses and you're like, whoever wins, football being football, so touch wood. But if that goes again in the final, whoever wins, City or Madrid, they will win that cup because that those two teams are either going to have to improve. Unbelievable. You'd need. You'd have to improve so much. You would need. Sam Allardyce coaching the defence to to make sure that you're not going to concede. That's how, yeah. that's how much you've got to improve. It's off the scale. And, it, and you need to remember, Real Madrid hadn't conceded a Champions League goal in six hours of football till we scored against them. And what a goal it was. I know. Have, have that one, Courtois. Martin, do you agree with a Kanji? Um, I, I, I actually think Kanji is a better full back than he is centre back. To be yeah. totally honest with you, I, I think Kanji has wobbles at centre back. I don't think he has wobbles at full back. When I watch him as centre back, I think he, he, he doesn't read the ball as well. You look at some of the goals, especially, you know, the big punts over the top, mm -hmm. he, he does tend to look, you know, for a. For a big unit like he is, because he's not little, height-wise, he shouldn't be sort of losing the flight of the ball Glad like he does. Glad you said that. But, <laughs> but I, th I think when he's got that support from, you know, whether it's Grealish or whoever's there with him, or when he's on the right, it's Bernardo. Um, and I say I'm a said Maras, because <laughs> he, he ain't going to do no support in defence-wise. Um, I'll be honest with you, I, I, I have... I, I got really worried when Aki was out. Now, when as soon as I saw the Kanji play against Arsenal, yep. I went, yeah, I've got no worries anymore. Because I think that's a fair point, Amarini. I think we all got a little... And by the way, Amari, it was a great point about Walker, about his uh, off-the-field activities. You know, I totally forgot about that if I was a... By the way. But yeah, I think what Martin says, it's... it's I think we all got a little bit worried, didn't we? Knowing that... Aki was out. We didn't have that trust in Laporte. You know, I'll yeah. put my hand up there. Uh, I think you had the same concerns when smug, smug ass above you there was going like, ah, Laporte will come in. And he was right. 
and Laporte had two good games. However, you want to put Laporte in against Rodrigo or Vinicius yeah. Junior on on Tuesday night, would you? You know, as as much as you would put Laporte in against Leeds, or I'm not going to say the the team coming for uh, coming up in case don't want that to fight, but it just shows like. We've said for a while, Pep almost picks players for the match rather than because he has to. Hmm. Definitely. And that's that's one of the key things at this stage in the season. And it's no, it's absolutely no coincidence that we've got to this point in the season now. Again, touch wood, with no real serious injuries. Because he's played them and he's rotated them. But when he's rotating them, wouldn't you think they'd get an injury? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I, I, I couldn't quite you. I, I couldn't think of the word last week when uh, you know we were talking to Amberie about it. But it's not rotating. I think he's just picking the right tool for the. Right, I say it every week. He, he just picks a tool for the job. And if it's speed, he's going to go. He's going to go for walking over the ball every time. We said it's not, like, it's not like it's not like you to be a week behind, mate. <laughs> <laughs> right, I've let's. Field, I've been to Huddersfield and all, mate. It's, I, I went back about forty years in a week. Do you send our love to her, Mr. Warnock? Oh, I tell you what, they're, they're happy with him over there. They love him. Well, right, I, I wasn't asked myself, but they do. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go first on Ruben Diaz. Here I we didn't, go. I didn't think he was great. Uh, you know. It's been well documented what I say. I've had, I've had a few pelters over it. But I'm, and I'm going to come to a collective team performance in a bit. But with Diaz, <coughs> I, I don't think... Yeah, he did a block to stop it going 2-0. But also, maybe if he'd have done a block, it'd have stopped us going 1-0 behind. I'll let you go first, Anne-Marie. I, 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 I'll give him a seven and a... A, a, a grudgedly seven and a half. Oh, and I'd agree with that. But, and you can point the finger at him for the goal, but you could point, like I said before we started, you could point the finger at the midfield and the defence, any of the defence, for their goal, because at no point did anyone close him down or try and get a tackle in. You know, so... I think it's harsh to point the finger at, at Diaz. But I would agree with the seven and a half. Stan? We, we gave Walker eight, didn't we? We gave a candy eight. No, I gave Walker ten. I gave Walker ten. Oh, got a ten from them. He's a ten from himself, yeah. I'd give him, I'd give him the, I'd give Diaz the extra half mark because eight and a half for the fact that Yes, there was a little couple of ricks on him, but the way he organises that defence, he's, he's the kingpin. And I think sometimes he probably does go out of his way a little bit to make sure those around him. I think this way you pick it up, Martin, with the kanji that he's slightly better there in this three than he is as a fullback or as a centre back. Because he's got him a little bit closer, not too close, but just enough for him to so organise him. Drop back a yard, move forward, tuck in a little bit. All the little bits. And I think you're right there, Martin, that Akanji does wobble. The kid we had from um, Dortmund on at the start of the year said, you know, and a few German commentators have all said they're wondering why he's got so much better. Because he always had a rick in him. And I think he might struggle when he's right in the middle. But if it, once he's off to one side, and you can see the picture a bit better. Stan. He has helping him. That's where he's at. I, I heard a, a German analyst say something about Akanji, and I couldn't believe what he was saying. He said, I think Akanji is really, really good. Yeah? Nah. Nine. I think you've got... Nine. Nine. So, so, so uh, Diaz gets a nine from Martin. I was going to say that, yeah. Do you know the reason I thought I thought you were being a touch harsh on Diaz? Because I was what? Because I was one who gave you pelters for it. 
I, I won't lie. I gave you massive pellets for it. <laughs> I nearly unfollowed you, actually. But no. <laughs> Go back. The very first attack Real Madrid had. Where's my delete button? You look at Diaz. Diaz was the one who made that block. Because Vinny had got through, the ball had come across, it had gone past Eddie, and Diaz was the guy who cleared it away. I think it was literally their first attack on goal. And yeah, I mean, to me, the goal, I put a little bit more blame on Bernardo Silva. I think he, I think he could have tracked him a bit better. Do you think but Mahrez I, back a bit better? No, 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 because you know that. But you know my issue with the, even blaming Bernardo or anyone? The semi-final is a very dangerous situation because I've heard people say, take the yellow card, foul him, take the yellow. But then you walk in a tight rope in the second leg because if you yeah. get a yellow in that, you're out the final. Yeah, it's true. In that I'm like, show. yeah, but as managers always say, it's like the red card, let the goal go in. Don't take the red card. You can come back from a goal behind. It's more difficult with 10 men. Mm -hmm. So it's a very, it's a chicken and egg situation for me. Does he take the yellow and take the chance in the second half, second leg? Or do you let the goal go in and, and fight back to get the draw? So, Martin, which option did he take? Did he take the chicken or the egg option? I, I think he took a little bit of both. I, 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 no, 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 I, I just genuinely think that was a... World class goal from from Real Madrid. I know, and and we we said we, I think we said that before you come on, mate. Where sometimes you just listen. If everybody did the job, it'd be a boring old game, wouldn't it? Football. Of course it would. I, I mean, for me, I give I give Diaz an A. I I don't think that. anyone in the back line played bad, apart from probably no. No, I'd say all the back line played well for me. All right, I'm going to go on to Stones here. I thought Stones he, uh, sometimes look a little bit lost in midfield on on Tuesday. Um, but the thing is, what you got with Stones here, he never hides from anything. And he, he still tried some of them cross-field passes, which worked uh, brilliantly. I'm, I'm going to give Stones here a seven. I'm going to give him a seven and a half because... Yeah, although he didn't have his best, and some players didn't have the best, but again, we'll come on to collective in a bit. He didn't have his usual high standard performance, Anne Marie. No, he didn't. Um, and again, you have to put that down to a different level of opposition to what mm -hmm. he's playing every week. Um, but like you say, you know. As we go through the team, there'll be others that we can discuss at length as to them not having the same kind of game they have week in, week out. Um, yep. But he did his job. He did what he needed to do. Can't knock him. I'd definitely go seven and a half. Dan smiling there. Go on. Go on, Tiger. No, it's, uh, it's not that. It's, uh, you know, Andre was absolutely spot on there. That it's, it's very difficult to give points when you're playing a team so much better than what you, you have been doing. Yeah. So you will make a few more mistakes because the quality you're up against is that much better than you used to. I thought, the, him and Rodri, I thought, this is why I'm struggling on giving individual points here uh, because I think you need to look at the units that were together. And him and Rodri together were really, really good. They were really good. We'll come on to Rodri in a minute. It was only that little start of the second half where we had the wobbles. You're going to get it. But outside of that, I didn't think they were that much of a threat. I'm going to tell you what, I just love it. I just love it. They've got to go to the Etihad yet, and I just love it. Go on, Martin. <laughs> Calm down, Keegan. <laughs> um... I'm not, not on target. The first shot they had, all right, it went in. But to keep Madrid quiet till the 30 odd minute. Considering, before, like, considering before they stand before considering before they scored, we had five attempts yeah. on the target. Yeah. Yeah. I mean John Stones is an hard one for me. 
Because are, are, we, are, we, are, we, are we rating him as a like centre back? Are we rating him as a midfielder? Are we rating him as a number 10? Because at some parts in that game, he was he was number 10. Rate him as. <laughs> rate him as you saw his performance throughout the game. I'd say about a seven. Seven. I thought I thought at parts he was going too far forward. Yep. At one point he was sort of in the box alongside of Harland, and I'm like, well, where's he going? And it, it does worry me a little bit, you know. Like stands, you can get away with that in the Premier League when you're in the Santiago Bernabeu. You, I don't want to see that. It doesn't help my heart rate when I see John Stones in the box. I mean, in the attacking box. Don't mind him in the defensive one. But, yes, to me, to me seven's still a, a decent score. Um, to start anyone anyone in that inverted role is a hard one to judge because mm-hmm. it's a very, very hard role to play. Yeah, it's hard. Very right? hard role to play. It is. All right, let's move on to Rodri. I'll start off. Rodri, nine. I just think Rodri is an absolute monster. Normally, normally you get you get players who have the physical attributes and stuff like that, like Harry Maguire, but he falls over his feet. But with Rodri, he is just class. Not only is he a big unit, he's an incredible footballer uh, and Marina. He's got the intelligence, and I think that's a really a key fact for him. Um, and it, I mean, all season he's been he, literally undroppable. For us, I would say, um, I would ag- agree with maybe not quite oh, now, but certainly. For those, certain- on, for those on audio who've just heard, uh, oh Jesus Christ, Martin has just come on the camera. So, that sounds so wrong. Martin, has just <laughs> <come on. laughs> I'm, gonna I'm gonna have to put this out after nine o'clock tonight. <laughs> Pardon, I don't be putting anything out after nine o'clock, Kyle Walker. Oh, no. Sorry, Anne-Marie. Sorry for his filth. Sorry, but definitely I'd give Rodri a good eight and a half. The way we're going, Andy, we'll have Sid James (laughs) presenting the pub cast. (laughs) You already have? (laughs) I don't know. Uh, And soon it could be sponsored by... uh, No, we we are looking at a sponsor. Ooh, ooh. 8BT Sport, they've just put up West Ham, 190 million. It's the first time I've seen them do anybody other than City for uh, how much the first 11 cost. 190 million. But I think with Altmar being only 10 million, I think they would try That's the a point you so, would try to so, so I think He's under 20 to... of that Declan Rice. Probably, <laughs> yeah. So I think what we're going to have to say now is, yes, this, this stream will be going out live, aren't we? Not pre-recorded, which We've is. said that anyway, you can't go over it. We've done that anyway, it's not a secret, is it? Shh. So, anyway, yeah, that are that good, aren't they? You wouldn't know anyway. There you go. I'll live and die by that. Martin, I think we was on about Rodri, mate. Apologies for Stan. Oh, he's got he's got a bit giddy because he's been let out of his prison cell for the night. No, I, I actually thought Rodri. I thought Rodri did really well. I've seen some some fans have a go at him. I think Rodri's one of them players. Some will love him, some will hate him, and but to me, I thought it was about an eight, eight, eight and a half out of ten. I thought it was it was solid again. Um, it's very hard because you're up against a very top class midfield. Tony I, Cruz. I thought it bossed me. Yeah. It's. This is it stands got a point. It's a very hard thing to judge on players when you've got Real Madrid. And to me, it was just two top, top teams going hell for leather. Nobody wanted to give an inch. And yeah. And funnily enough, I enjoyed that game more than the Bayern Munich one. And that was a really weird thing. I never thought I'd say. But from a footballing perspective and a tactical analysis perspective. I, I, I enjoyed the game. Hang on, I, I thought I thought you don't do stats and analysis. I'm just getting ready for my nine o'clock show. <laughs> so <laughs> um, no, I, I, I enjoyed it. I, I thought Rodri, Rodri to me is the best CDM in the world. 
for, 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 for those who, who don't know, for the older generation who don't know what a CDM is, just explain what that is to Stan. And Anne-Marie. To the idiots. <laughs> No, so, right, I'm going to go on to KDB. I'm going to give KDB an eight because, again, it's 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 a difficult one. This because I don't think he was on his top top game all the match, but when we needed it and when he dug it out for us with that with that goal, I I, I just I just thought that players like what do I say come of the I will come, come with the man. I will come with the man, yeah. Yeah. And that just was Oi, you can't have Coke on this show. Sorry, yeah. you've not got that sponsor, have you? <laughs> uh yeah, and Maria, I just I just thought when, when we needed him, it it turned up because it sometimes <laughs> accused of not turning up in certain big matches. I think he just laughed at that one on a yeah. on Tuesday. Yeah. I think anybody, if if I ever heard anyone say that about Kevin, I'd have to shoot them down. Because... Well, funnily enough, Martin says that all the time. <laughs> Martin, he's he lying. Really, he doesn't really. Like, you like you really him. believe in him over me? No, it's true. <laughs> but, Go I on, mean, Go Kevin. On. Kevin is the man that will dig us out of. Near enough any situation, you only need to look at the Villa game at the end of last season. I know Gundogan scored the goals, but you know you needed Kevin there to set them up. And and you know obviously I know Sterling set one up as well, but he's just unbelievable. I mean it was just it was a classic goal, um, and you could tell the relief if you like that. That the whole team felt when that ball went in. Mm -hmm. um, you know, Kevin's been a bit hit and miss at times this season, but I would definitely I'd I'd go with a nine for Tuesday night. You you wouldn't want anybody else in your midfield, would you? No, no, but for that for that stand for that for that kind of role. Yeah, I think I think the biggest tribute that you can give to a player is that they are. You can't take them off as a substitute because they could do that moment at any point. All right with Haaland, he might not have the ball for 89 minutes and then he'll walk off with a hat trick and you'd be wondering how he's done it. He's one of them. You know when, when um, De Bruyne comes off, Pep's sort of like, right, the game's over, I'm going to give him a rest and we're going to be looking at something else. That is like, that is the red flag for what's going on. Yeah. He's, and, and, and you're right, he's... Um, he has improved and his maturity has gone through the roof. And there was a point, I mentioned it to you before, Andy, that with five minutes to go, him and Harlan made a break. And yes, yeah. In front, tried to thread that ball through and it didn't quite go to Harlan. So that, and that, that, on, the le on the left one, he tried to yeah, get it. He'd gone off onto the right and he was getting it into the middle and Harlan had just peeled off a bit. And for the first few seconds, I was thinking, there's nobody there. What we're doing? What we're doing? Why did nobody back it up? And then you think, this is the maturity of the City team now. They didn't need to go and chase that winner. No. What they didn't want is to get caught on the counter. So it, they went, again, okay, it, it, if you get a goal, right? yeah, okay, if you get a goal, that's great. But I'm not going to break my neck here to get up there to get back and then the ball goes faster than me anyway and then they go and score. I just mm -hmm. thought they'd tightened it right up. And that was a little bit of pragmatism that we don't normally see from Pep or the team. And I think, rightly, it's sneaking into the game. And I think it is making us a better team. Because we see oh, it now. We can yeah. do different things at different points in matches. Uh, yeah. So, uh, and, uh, sorry hello. to be a tall pain. I need to shoot. I've just had a phone call off from home. Right, yeah. you get on, mate. I'll you, catch you. You know where to meet. You know where to meet. Cheers, mate. Anyone Bye -bye. listen to this, subscribe to these legends, the old deserve it. Get to that thousand mark. Thanks, Cheers. Martin. Cheers, Martin. Thanks for joining I us, pal. He's got the uh, fire brigade siding on so he can fly on now and get his uh, pie and chips or whatever he's having. <laughs> no, I, I, I know that. He, 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 wouldn't, 
He wouldn't have gone unless he needed to, mate. Oh, uh, wow. Right. So let's get on to Grealish. I, I'm going to give a Grealish eight because I thought it was a, a very, very mature performance with, from him. Not just footballing reasons like the way he was passing his ball retention, but also his maturity mm -hmm. with because he was being kicked when he left, right, and yeah. center. Uh, uh, he should have probably had what three, four yellow cards, not him, not Grealish, but the fouls, sorry, the assaults on him. Yeah. And he handled that very, very well. And at one point, after he got thrown into the hoardings and stuff like that, which that should have been a red card in my opinion as well, because that was just serious foul play. Um, there was just something after that, that Danny Calvau as, as well, where he fouled Grealish again and Grealish just went in front of him and just going like that. Laughing, laughing at him as if to say, whatever you do, you're not gonna, you're not gonna rattle me. So I think you have to bring that, Amory, into a perform, into a, when you're judging somebody on a performance in a football match. Yeah, you do because the thing is, Grealish should know by now whether it's whether it's Real Madrid, whoever we're playing against, they're gonna target him because they mm -hmm. want him to react. And there's been a couple of times over the last few weeks when he has reacted when he possibly shouldn't have done, should have just walked away. Um, but there is that level of maturity in his interview after the game. What was just so evident was how much he loved playing in that game, Yeah, how much he enjoyed it. Um, and that's great to see. I you love know. his interviews. I, I absolutely love his interviews. I can't wait for him to be interviewed after a match. Yeah. No. So it was really it was good to see, and I would, I, his ball retention was the the best of any player on the pitch. Um, so an eight would be just about right for him. But Stan, we've um, what I I, I totally agree with what Anne Marie's saying there about his, but he gets judged off some City fans sort of like not always in a positive way about, oh yeah, he passes backwards, you know, he passes sideways and stuff like that. If Pep didn't want him to play like that, he would not be in Pep's starting 11 week in, week out. That's part of Pep's master plan, it? ball retention, ball retention. When you can get forward, get forward, but do not overdo it. Yeah, it's, um, it's he's got the exact same problem as whoever plays on the other wing. They're, they're not looking for them to get forward. Now, Jack Grealish will get away with a lot more because, like you say, in the interviews afterwards, when he says that, you know, when you're a kid and you, you're dreaming of playing football, you, this is where you're dreaming of you know you want to be in Madrid you want to be playing these big games yeah. you want to do that I, I think Mares on that side gets a, that little bit more flat because he, he doesn't seem to be quite as, as agreeable as Jack do you know what I mean yeah. he's got a different now, there's a, a big a big difference Stan between the two and the difference for me is is that Grealish tracks back and you see him do his job in, in defence. You, you do, don't see the same. You don't see that from Mares. No, he, he, he actually did that on Tuesday as well, Anne Marie, didn't he? You know, even you know, the uh, you know, fair, fair, you know, fair dues. And that's oh. and by the way, it's it's always a joke when we when we like the Anne Marie Mares thing. It, that is just a joke, but it she does talk sense with stuff like that, and I think every, everybody can see that. Like you don't, but you know something. Maybe that's what Pe Pep knows that Mares can't do that, and that's why he puts Bernardo in there. And you know, and let's move on to let's move on to Bernardo. All I'm going to say. One last thing, Dan. Then the thing is, if the pair of them came back, where's the out ball going? If we need to get out, and both of them. Yeah, are it's back. almost like you leave it dog legged, in it. You know, you have oh, one back. Yeah. You, so, you've got, like, so you've got that outlet on the right. Now, if we had two players that could go back, you could mix them, but we mm -hmm. haven't. So, and Jack's happy to do it, and I think that's what that's what goes on. Anyway, but we have. Uh, well, I, so I'm gonna I'm gonna give a Jack an eight for that, would you? Yeah. Right. All I'm gonna say about Bernardo, I think it was his worst game he's ever played for City. Right. I think he's lucky to be getting a six from me. Yeah. However, I wouldn't have any other player on the on the pitch in the second leg because 
I hope I've never I can't ever see Bernardo having a I called him having a shocker, which maybe it's a little bit critical of that. But you won't have two games like that. Ex exactly. And you know and you know something? We, I think we know Mares will play on, on on Sunday against Everton. I'd want Bernardo on that pitch come Wednesday because he will excuse me, he, the lad will perform for us and Again, I'm not being overcritical for Bernardo and Marie, but he's entitled to have a shocker in it. Sorry, and not a great game. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I think um, the one thing we can't fault him on is his effort. He tried. Now it was just it was one of those what, games what where yeah. one of those games where nothing was going to come off with Bernardo. Um, but you can't ever ever fault his effort. No, he, he knew himself it wasn't his greatest game, but he still ran and ran mm -hmm. and ran. Um, and I'd want that in my team every day of the week. Um, so I would agree. It's not like I don't particularly like marking him down, but it was it was definitely only a six performance. Mm. And I'll come to the collectiveness in a bit. Stan, would you go with, with a six for Bernardo or are we being a bit harsh? I think you're being a bit hard um, for the reason that Real Madrid said are the team that could make you look like it plays with rated threes and fours and fives. They're, they're poor performances, do you know what I mean? On the rating scale, if you come out with a two or three or four or a five, you've not had a particularly great game. Sixes, you've done all right. I think he did a bit more than done all right because he stopped them. He stopped Cameron Finger from getting out. Camel Finger! And supported. No, that's, that, that's here. And supporting that um, that midfield on on the left for them, and I think it, it was one of those dirty jobs that nobody really looks at, and he did it. Yeah, you give him a seven. He wasn't, you know, it wasn't sparkling going forward. But again, we're playing away. We need to come back with something. The attacking will come next week with the fans behind us at home. That's where you win the game. And that's why I was happy that you, you're always going to be happy that you're away first. You can go over there, do the dirty work, get the donkey work done, get yourself a little platform. And then as long as you've got some sort of result, when you come back, you can attack and win. And I think they did it. I, th I really do think that, that City did it and Bernardo played his part. I think the problem for Bernardo was he played a part of a role that we weren't expecting from him. Because everything you've said is true about him. Everything. He can unlock defences. He works hard. He gets around. He does the bit. Mm -hmm. But I think he, he, he got sacrificed a little bit there because Guardiola knew he would do a better job of that than Mahrez would. Absolutely. Right, let's move on to Gundo. I'm going to give Gundo a seven and a half, right, because I just roll... I still think he's a Rolls-Royce of a player. Mm. I don't think he's a player now where you could play him... Three, three matches a week. However, when his time on the ball, his intelligence, you know, sometimes it doesn't always go for him, but his intelligence is second to none. I I think he's possibly the closest with a brain to, to Pep, you know, in, in his knowledge. He, he, sometimes he, try, he tries to do that pretty similar to what, what De Bruyne does. He try, he's already got that third... The next three passes in his head, but you know what? While he's got the ball, if that makes sense, a bit like David Silver did, and I thought he had a very solid game on a seven and a half. Amory, he did. Um, now in my head, I, I, I had him at about a seven. I think, like you say, there's between him and Rod, Rodri, two most in intelligent players in our team um, and it was just I think it was I kind of think with maybe 15 minutes to go Pep should have maybe brought him off because he'd, he'd run out of legs at, by that point um, See, you know, my take, my my take on that was with with Pep. 
I think he trusted them them players to sit to see it through, Stan. You know what what he picked. Yeah, I think he did. And one one of the things was that we got a nice spin off in that when we go to Everton now, we've got um, oh, up from Alvarez, Foden, um, Mares. Mm-hmm. Mares will be fine against Everton. No one's going to disagree with that. Do you know what I mean? It's when you're talking, you're talking right at that little bit at the top. He'd be all right at Everton, Laporte. All it gives another player, and all I was thinking of, I can't remember his name. But you've got all these players now, fresh. They've not, they've not had a minute of playing, so they'll be up and they'll be ready. And we're going in there now with half a team. You can add on another three or four that you'll play every every week anyway, and it might just give Gundo that little bit of a rest that he needs, and not bring him on against Everton, not as a punishment, just so that he's fresh for Madrid at home. And, you know, and we have to take Everton seriously as well because they had a great result, great result on on Monday, I think it was, wasn't it? Or Sunday. But we are taking them seriously, but unfortunately, we're in a position where, I mean, the beauty of the position we're in is God, you know, God forbid, I don't want this to happen. We can lose to Everton, and it won't matter. We can still win the league. I don't want that happening. Don't you know? Before everyone kills me, I don't. It's standing. It's all, it's almost Pep rested players for the Madrid match and he rested players against Madrid for the Everton match, if that makes sense. It does make sense and it's absolutely insane, but welcome to the world of Pep Guardiola. So, <laughs> so, so yeah, I'm, I'm, we, we more or less agree on Gondola. Right, yeah. how... I've, I've, oh, the, 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 if he does sign that two-year contract, we'll all be delighted. There's no doubt I would about be that. delighted, yeah. So... Yeah, that that's the word on the street. That is a is agreed a two year a two year contract with us, which I, I am delighted about. If if that is is that true, Harland, it was I, not really City fans I've seen, but in in the media that he had a shocker, this that and the other. I thought he had another one who had a very mature performance because it, yeah, he could have scored a couple of goals in the first half, but do you know something? I think his overall play people people are not sitting. Because when Haaland doesn't score, it's Jesus Christ, you know, yeah. Haaland not score. They're not seeing what he's actually doing on the pitch with his link-up play. I, I think it was a very mature performance. I'm going to give a Haaland a, Haaland, a, Haaland a eight. I'm going to give Haaland a, a, an eight and Marie. She do not agree with that. No, definitely not. I think you're being over-generous. Probably because um, I, I love him. Yeah, I love him, but he was still only worth a six. Oh, a, just, a six? A six. I thought at times his, his movement wasn't great. Uh, he could have come deeper for the ball, and he didn't. Um, and he was, he was, you know, between, and I don't like the player, Rudiger, and I don't know who the, the name of the other centre-half but they they had they did a good job on him. Yeah, he was very naughty, Rudiger as well, wasn't it? Uh, the way yeah. he he was behind Harlan, more or less waiting for Harlan's elbow to go to try and get him sent off. Uh, that'll be a different game anyway. He, he, I don't think he'll be allowed to get away with that at the Etihad stand, will he? No, it was Alaba, the other fella, who's a you know a really really experienced, wildly wily uh, centre back. I think this is one of the things that it just it, it makes me smile that it was something that the press that he always had a bad game and all this that and the other. But you always say it all right then. Um, it was it the manager the other week was saying that uh, oh you just have to stop Harlan. Well all right then. St- if you stop him, you're gonna have to stop somebody else and somebody else. Let's not get this wrong. We battered them off the park that first half. Mm-hmm. They had one shot. We had six. He doesn't have to take every one of them shots. You've got stats in front of you there, haven't you? No, I haven't. I did have, but I haven't at the moment because of memory. Stato! Stato! And uh, he's, he's, turned around, he's turned around and allowed gaps for other players to get in. And they have. The fact that they've got an experienced, fantastic goalkeeper in net that stops a lot of them, nothing you can do about that. But the point is, they made the chances. They have the shots. And it's not always going to fall on Ireland. And when it doesn't fall on Ireland, the others are going to have to step up. 
I could equally turn around and say, he's given Bobby Dylan a batter in there. Because mm-hmm. he didn't get any. What, 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 can anyone remember what Rudiger did other than what Rudiger does? That's what, That's exactly what I was going to say. R- Rudiger for that game, I'll be remembered trying to get Ireland sent off, you know, for, yeah. for, his, for his dirty tactics. But I'll tell you something, though. For, I've, I've, I've enjoyed this, you know, the way, the way we've gone through. Because although the game was on Tuesday... We've had time to go through and di- digest it, you know, rather than straight after a match, you know, everyone gets yeah. a bit, you know, knee jerky. And yeah, there's one or two we, I don't think collect- collectively we was uh, far out. Uh, so let's talk collectively for a team, a team performance. I'm going for 10 out of 10, what they've done at the Bernabeu. They go there, they've learned from the mistakes from last season, Anne Marie. And I think we have come out of it. With praise, aren't we? You know, a mature performance, and I would agree with you. I'm not going to go quite for the 10 out of 10, I'm going to go for nine because I think again, we had chances, we created chances, we have to be more clinical. Sorry, did I say 10? I meant nine. Sorry, sorry. I, I, look, I, look, I, I did actually write nine down. Go on. No, I just think we need to be particularly in games like that, when we've created a chance, we have to be more clinical. Do you think, though, Anne-Marie, that if it, we'd have scored first, Real Madrid would have equalised when KDB equalised, we could be going into the match at the Etihad with a different mindset? But it, does that make sense? Where Because we thought we was in the game, battered in the first half, second half, you know, the... He was very good, Real Madrid, but we come back. We 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 dug in to get that sensational equaliser. Do you yeah. think that gives more of a more of a bit of a oomph to us rather than the other way around? Very possibly, and I think I think even if we'd have been beaten one nil, which I don't think would have been a fair result on Tuesday night, I think bringing them back to the Etihad would have been a whole different ball game. And I expect it to be a whole different ball game when we play them on Wednesday night. I think when we've got our our fans behind us, it will make all the difference. And it is, you know, it's down to the fans to really be the twelfth man on Wednesday. But will it, Amory? Right, we'll have a, a minute. We'll have a minute on that point about about the fans. Ooh, what's that? Thought what's going on there? Right. About the fans. I'm a little bit concerned about this because of the way the ticket allocation's gone. Will that 12th man be there like it was against against Arsenal because of the way City have done the ticket allocation? That's the only thing what concerns me a little bit, you know. Yeah, and it would concern me particularly with a lot of day trippers. Um, but I think we will have our hardcore fans there mm-hmm. who will do everything they can to generate the atmosphere and the fact that you know um madrid will i'm sure have sold all their tickets it'll it should help generate an even better atmosphere and if we can get behind the team like we know we can Mm -hmm. then that should make all the difference we should be able to drag the team over the line stan do you reckon what i said about with us equalising after going under the cosh a little bit in the second half, that could, as well as the, the 12th man, that could be an advantage for us. Yeah, I, I thought um, it was not, um, it wasn't a coincidence that they scored when we were on top and we scored when they were on top. And it shows you the danger of overcommitting or getting a, a, a couple, you know, forward too much. I think that's probably the reasoning behind De Bruyne and Ireland later on. You yeah. know, there was a potential there. We could overstretch and then we lose it. I think being 1-0 down and coming back shows that you've got the mentality. And I think we've got enough mis- mature and experienced fans to drag us over the line and to get people around them singing. It's, a lot of people don't want to start the singing. We've got plenty of people that will start singing. They'll do it and the others will join in. So we're, we're, we're relying, we're relying on the the, the rizzes on on Wednesday, aren't we? You know, to put his money, 
put his money where his mouth is about the South Stand being absolutely the king of the king of uh, stands and stuff oh, like that. Come so, on now, we've got to big up the South Stand massive. Well, hang on, hang on. We, we, this is for you, Riz, if you do manage to watch this. Come on, where are you? Where are one. you? Where are you? <laughs> There's been really a moment. Sorry, Stan, go on. I was going to say, yeah, Riz, Riz, let's be having you. <laughs> let's be having you. Where are you? But for the team, I w I just, going, just going back on them ratings, because you never asked me in the field, slighted. Um, between all of them, I'd give him seven, eights and nines. But I'd give 11 out of 10 for the team. I thought that Collective was a effective one. effort. Much better than the players individually did. If we'd have won that, I'd have given them 15 out of 10. But as it is, it was only... Well, funnily one. enough, mate, I wrote 10, 10 down. <laughs> it's, uh, but again, you know, we've all, come, we've all had different thought processes on the game, but we've all pretty much come to the same conclusion. Yeah, yeah. You know, we're not, when, you know, when at the end of the day, we know that was a, that was a mature, classic performance. And they're going to be a little bit gutted because you're at the Royal Stadium in front of the Royal fans playing Royal European dignitaries. The Royal and family, my ass. And they only got a draw with Lickle Old City. They've got the bank card out again, Bob. Yeah. <laughs> what is it? They're on about us again, Bob. Right. Let's, fin Let's there. finish. And I know we'll, we'll be doing a show, but I just thought we, we'll tie it up with Real Madrid. I know we'll be doing a show before the, before the, you know, the Real Madrid match and stuff like that. How can you see us playing, Anne Marie, in the second leg? Do you think we'd be more slowly, slowly catch the monkey, or do you think we'll be a little bit more forceful? You know, try, trying, we'll to be, that, trying to get I that early. We'll be, I think we'll be more forceful, if I'm honest. Um, And I think I think we will win the game. Well, yeah, I'm confident a bit. Yeah, Stan. Yeah, I can't see why we can't just surprise them and go for it straight from the off, right into their throat. It's not going to be a surprise, is it? They don't go. Jesus, they come out of it. Yeah, it's a surprise. They will do because I don't think they'll understand that you know. Man City is an intimidating place now in Europe. Whether anyone laughs or jokes or whatever. We've not lost there for 27 games. We've only lost once to Real in the last five matches. What? You know, we've got it. Hey, going you look like Carlo Ancelotti then. With, with, with my little brew. No, so would you, would you go at it more? 3-0. No. More, more like a, a Premier League match. Let's do it like a, a fast, fast approach. No, no, because we'll never do that. I, I don't think he's going to do that then. It's going to be as close to just controlled destruction rather than the absolute mayhem that went on at Brighton v Everton, Leicester v whoever it was. Was it Fulham or the, whoever? Yeah, the and New Newcastle as well. Yeah, was it? all those were just chaos. Leicester. I couldn't see a football match in any of them games. It was just chaos. It was just pure bad defending, wasn't it? Right, guys. Uh, you know, Summer, I've really, really enjoyed that. As I say, sometimes it's good to just sit down and analyse, isn't it? You know, just go through. Yeah. We don't, and we was only on planning on doing a half an hour show, and we've gone into it what uh, you know, an hour, an hour and ten minutes. So it just shows that it's been, you know, an enjoyable show to do. Uh, mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, next up, uh, we won't go into it other than we've got Everton. You know, we, we may do a. A pre-match uh, Everton on Saturday or something like that. If any of you are available, uh, but yeah, I just think great performance on Tuesday. Well worth, well worth the draw at least. And on to the Etihad now for them on on Wednesday. Yeah. Thank you yep. for joining. Thanks, no Andy. Lovely to see and, you all. Hey, and you. I'm just glad that you're out on a uh, on bail, bail, mate. Yeah, he's tagged. Gareth Bale wasn't very happy. They told him, right, you're out on bail. <laughs> and on that note, cheers, guys. <laughs> <laughs>